Hi there, it's Fabian the Blind speaking and this is the next tutorial for AE Map version 0.3 and uh, I added some new features. Um, I hope you dig them. To install it you have to put it in the same place as always, the scripts folder or the script UE panels folder. If you want it as a dockable panel use the UE panels folder, if you just want a floating panel you can use the scripts folder. Important is that the delivered world geojson folder is next to the AE map script or it won't work. So if you start the map, uh, if you want to start the script you can find it on the window a map and then you get this uh, little warning that you don't trust scripts from untrusted sources and you don't sue me and if you want to buy cookies and beer for me or if you want me to buy cookies and beer uh, donate something via a scripts it makes me happy so we start it up and there we go i will walk you quickly through all these settings the draw the map button what it does it draws a map the open help button tries to open the online help. Uh, all these files in the online help will also be in the download. So don't worry if you don't get an internet connection or you should worry if you don't get an internet connection. But you can also read the map, uh, the help offline. And we got this pull down, but I will show you what happens behind that later on. So. First checkbox, the 3D checkbox, it's pretty easy. If you check it, the new created layer or layers will be 3D. Then the next one is the single layer checkbox. If it's checked, you only produce one single layer with all the polygons on it. If it's not checked, you will produce uh, lots of layers. It's 286. And um, yeah, so if you you saw when you check it some of these options uh, get disabled it's so easy to add a change the color or add a stroke on one single layer i didn't bother to build in uh, some extended controls like for the multiple layers so we leave it like that um, the use shape layers uh, checkbox, as you can see, uh, as you, you know, you can't see, but uh, I think you can think of it that it's used to decide if you use masks or shape layers. And uh, if you check it, you can see the add stroke properties changes. There, you can see it. Um, the masks will use the stroke effect and the shape layers will use the stroke property for shape, shape layers. I leave it as shape layers, it's much more handy. Um, the next one, the use timestamp, it's uh, important if you want to use a stroke. You can see a lot of stuff happened. If you add a stroke to multiple layers, you need some control over it. So it will add, if you keep the link stroke props checked, it will add a controller with some expression controllers and add some expressions to the stroke effect or stroke property within the layers. But that's pretty render heavy, it's a lot of expressions. So you should use it to style your map and then bake it to have a faster map or bake the expressions uh, to have a faster map. And uh, where was I, the timestamp, if you link these props, these properties via expressions, um, you need a unique name for all the layers and uh, the comps, so you can uh, pre-compose them and still have the, the functionality of the expressions, like change on the stroke width and stuff like that. If you have multiple layers or multiple comps with the same, with the same name, the expression get confused and you don't get the result you want. So use the timestamp if you use expressions to link these properties. The next one, the add stroke property, I already told you what it does. And it also disables or enables uh, uh, the linking. Um, the add Zorotex is pretty useful if you 
make uh, multiple layers because it's not that easy to sort them out when you have 286 layers within your comp. Um, use them if you have multiple layers so you can sort out within your, within your timeline. The reposition anchor. Um, this is built on, the, on a script uh, called Reposition Anchor Points by Charles Bordenave. This repositions the anchor uh, into the center of the shape or the mask. Um, pretty useful if you want to do some 3D animations like flying around, flying to the center. And yeah, and the link stroke props, we already had that. It links the stroke properties to the controller. The comp name, it's, it's pretty obvious, you can put in the comp name. And uh, below that we got the scale. If you need a special size for your map, um, you can put in something like 3.5 and this will make a map in the size 360 times 180 and the width and the height times your scale. So do the math. The duration in seconds field is for setting the duration of your new comp. And the FPS uh, pull down gives you the possibility to select uh, frame rate for your new comp. That's it with the comp settings. Uh, let's take this out and uh, let's go on. We just leave it like that. We use shape layers, add times and add a lot of properties. Yeah, it looks good. And go over to the fill settings. Here you can define some colors I already defined for you, like black, white, gray, and stuff like that. You can add run random colors if you make want to make shadow maps or something like that. And you got the color theme creator. These are some preset themes. And uh, here you can set your own values for the range, the offset, the saturation, and the lightness. I will show you quickly what these settings mean. So, up, where's my picker? So, if you set a range of 30, that means that it will select colors within 30 degrees on that circle. Like something like 30 degrees has to be something like this range. The offset is the starting point. It normally starts here in a red. If you offset it by 120 degrees, you will start somewhere around here and with our range of 30 degrees we will end up with colors in this range. The saturation is the uh, position of our selector within that circle and the lightness is uh, this slider. So you can create your own color themes for your maps, but it takes a lot of time because you have to calculate a new color for every item, 286 items. It's a lot of work. Next is uh, you get the possibility to add custom HSL colors or custom RGB color. If you need a special color that you can't change afterwards, you can set it right here. And the no fill option, it only works with multiple shape layers and you need a stroke property. If you don't add the stroke property, you won't see anything. Um, and it makes a map without filling only a contour. Looks pretty nice. The contour settings are the same or nearly the same as the fill settings. You got some predefined colors. You don't got the themes and you also got the possibility to add a custom HSL color or a custom RGB color. And uh, as in the last one, you got the all settings view so you can uh, 
see what's going on. And uh, let's do a map. I don't link the props. Maybe we do it 3D and reposition the anchors. These are the nice new features and also at Zorotech. I don't want a fill and yeah, white, white looks good. There we go, 360 seconds, pretty long. Uh, need to see something. Yeah, I know the problem that I had with Zorro. It needs some active comp, I think. So I just throw them over here. And there we go, pretty nice map. Got them all singled out here. Uh, you got them here. And uh, to show you how useful Zorro now is, He reads in and I select my favorite country, country, Gabon. He wants me about something. And, and here we go. Gabon. Somewhere in Africa. And as you can see, it is... Uh, a 3D layer and has the controller right in the middle. That's pretty sweet if you want to fly them around, put it into the center of the comp, blend all the others out, stuff like that. And that's about it. Um, all pretty self-explanatory. You got lots of help tips that tell you what you can do and you can't do. And yeah, do some maps. Let some countries fly around. That's about it. You got a lot of options if you uh, got problems or run into problems, write a comment on a scripts or contact me via one of these soft networks. And as always, if you make something beautiful, I would like to see, I would love to see. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.